Caution. This episode of Black Friday contains a depiction of police violence that involves a firearm. For a transcript of this episode, visit our website, theblackfridaypodcast.com. My name is Tycho Newman. This is Black Friday. for those Black Friday sales. A strange but true story of a local man who woke up to find he had undergone a radical transformation. Our correspondent, Valerie Hawkins, has more. By all accounts, Sam Greger was a regular guy who had it all. A good job, a loving girlfriend, and had just finished paying off his student loans. Sam is a typical New Jersey guy of Italian and Polish descent. He grew up in this neighborhood just outside Jersey City, spending his summers delivering pizzas and bagging groceries at the local grocery store. He graduated from New Jersey State University with a degree in communications and got a job in the area so he could be close to his parents. But two weeks ago today, this all changed dramatically. shock to me. I met Sam at an undisclosed location at his insistence. We also aren't using his real name and have blurred out his face because he fears retaliation for speaking out. It was kind of a surprise, really. I'd had a pretty regular week. I was looking forward to going fishing with my dad over the weekend. I went to bed that Thursday night and when I woke up on Friday morning, I didn't recognize the person in the mirror. That's because... When Sam Greger looked in the mirror that Friday morning, he realized that overnight he had turned into a black man. How did you feel? Oh, I was basically in shock. At, at first, I thought it was a dream. <laughs> and then I realized it really was me, except not my skin was dark. How did you become sure it was you? Well, I have this, this right here really distinctive scar on my forehead, and it was still there. Plus, all my clothes still fit, so I was basically the same shape, I guess, if you can call it that. And my glasses, I still needed them. If somehow I had switched bodies, I, um, I guess my prescription would have changed, right? What did you do next? The first thing I did was call in sick. How is I going to explain this to my boss? <laughs> uh, the next thing I did was call my girlfriend and then my, my parents. How did they react? My girlfriend? <laughs> uh, still processing it. I can't blame her. It's a, it's a huge life change. <laughs> As for my parents, they thought it was a practical joke. My dad even started telling me about this time he wore blackface to a Halloween party. He was supposed to be Prince or something. They're, they're still in shock, too. But I guess, I guess they'll find their, uh, their way to accepting it. Sam hasn't been back to work in the last two weeks and has been working from home avoiding neighbors and friends. His parents haven't yet visited or called. We reached out to his parents and girlfriend for comment, but our calls were not returned. Through it all, Sam remains optimistic. His sense of humor is obvious. This must be a really trying time for you. It is, it is, but you know what they say. Black don't crack. I mean, I hope it's not permanent. But... At the same time, a lot of worse things could have happened to me. I could have been hit by a car or gotten cancer. All in all, this isn't too bad. What do you plan on doing next? Get a new driver's license, a new passport. <laughs> I just thought of this. How am I going to answer the census questions? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm certainly not a regular white dude anymore. Whatever is next for Sam, we'll be sure to check in to see how he's doing. Valerie Hawkins, NJC News at 6. Back to you in the studio. Hey everyone, this is Audio Lab. So this was the first documented instance of the Black Friday phenomenon in the popular media. For the most part, it went completely unnoticed, probably because it first aired at a 5 o'clock newscast on the day after Thanksgiving. Valerie Hawkins, though, had a sense that something bigger was going on.
Okay, is this good? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Awesome. So, how do you want us to start? Why not start with your name and what you do? My name is Trisha Kowalczycki. Sorry, what? Can you repeat that? (laughs) In the TV business, they give you a normal-sounding name when your name is too hard to pronounce. Or spell, like in my case. My real name is Patricia Janet Kowalczycki. I prefer Trisha. Or Trish. But on TV, I'm Valerie Hawkins. How did you get started in television? I think I always wanted to be a newscaster, you know? I used to play news reporter all the time when I was a kid. In college, I took an internship doing gopher work at the local news affiliate, and I just did anything they asked me to. Anything? Well, nothing untoward. But they made you change your name. There was that. But my first job was literally sorting cables. Then they had me tracking down archival footage. Then they had me working sound. Like I would mic up the anchors and guests. One of the anchors was sick one day, so they asked me to sit in on a reading run. A reading run? Yeah. Lots of newscasts are pre-taped. They asked me to read some lines last minute in case they needed to. They never used the tape, but the producers liked it so much, they asked me if I wanted to do some field spots. That Sam Greger bit was maybe my third one. Are you serious? Yeah. How did you find the story? Social media, mostly. The guy's girlfriend, well, ex-girlfriend, was a friend of a friend of a friend. She posted it on social media, a picture of him before and after he turned black. Do you have the picture? Yeah, hang on. Here you go. You didn't think... You didn't think it was a hoax or something like that? Who would fake something like that? Blackface? In this day and age? You'd get crucified on social media. Remember that one chick in Washington State? And that was enough to convince you to interview him? I did run it down. I emailed him, asked him to reach out. At first, he was very suspicious. But after a couple days, he started to talk. What did he talk about? Just general bullshit, really. He didn't want me to use his real name. He wanted me to blur out his face and replace his voice. Which we did. What did your higher-ups think? They just wanted some last-minute filler for a five o'clock show. No one watches the news on a Friday afternoon. Let alone the Friday afternoon after Thanksgiving. They weren't concerned the story might be fake? It was no skin off their noses. At worst, they'd say a rookie reporter got pranked. If it came to it, they'd fire me. But I'd been on the air so few times, they could have put a brunette wig on me and called me Hillary Valkins. No one would notice, probably. That doesn't seem very likely. Yeah, well, we live in strange times. We'll be right back. Support for this podcast comes from the University of Westsylvania. Go Westies. Support for this podcast comes from Cadmus Pharmaceuticals. Cadmus, making life better. But you followed up with Sam. I did. About six months later, when he was shot. Tell me about that. Police shootings are actually pretty uncommon. Especially in this town. So it was pretty big news when it happened. I brought the tape. Fields was driving on Route 202 when police officers spotted what they believed was a broken taillight and expired tags. They pulled him over to give him a warning. Hang on. So his real name was Kevin Fields? Yeah. Officer, I... Officer, sir, stop resisting. 
I can explain. All right, taser, taser, taser. Things take a turn when Fields hands over his driver's license. From the body cam footage, you can see the police officer order Fields out of the car. Fields complies and exits the vehicle. And from here, you can't really see what else happens. Naturally, the police said it was a mistake. The cop mistook his taser for his gun. Wait, why did they tell him to get out of the car? That's not even the worst part. Turns out the guy who shot him wasn't really a cop. What? Yeah. He's just some wealthy retired insurance guy. He donates a lot to the local police brotherhood. In return, he gets to ride along as a reserve deputy. They give him a badge and a gun. It's really common. The reserve deputy thing. No. I mean, yes, that. I meant the mistaking a taser for a gun thing. There's a couple of cases where it happens in a jail cell. I still don't understand how he got shot. He hadn't changed his driver's license. You can't be serious. He tried a few times, but gave up in the end. He would go down to the DMV with his birth certificate, social security number, everything. They refused to believe him. They thought it was some kind of scam. So, what do you think happens when the police pulled over a nice car with a black guy whose license picture doesn't match his face? But he, uh, Kevin, survives. Yes. The bullet grazed his sixth vertebrae and caused a lot of internal bleeding, but he survived. Doctor said it was unlikely he was ever going to walk again, though. What happens next? What you would expect, I guess. His parents filed a lawsuit. They asked for $40 million, but settled for an undisclosed amount. The reserve deputy who shot him got kicked off the force, but nobody's done anything about the program, as far as we can tell. Basically, they tried to bury it and move on. You went to see him one last time. Tell me about that. About three weeks ago, I gave him a call to see how he was doing. He looked terrible when I saw him. Hadn't shaved. He had fired his home health aide. His girlfriend had come back for a little while, but once it was clear she wasn't getting a payout, I guess she left. That's what he said, anyway. It's more likely he was depressed and she just couldn't take it anymore. to the end. He sent me an email. I have it here. Here. You read it. He writes, Hi Trish. I wanted to thank you for checking up on me. I think I was lying to you when I said I could live like this. The truth is I can't. It's too much. I basically live in pain, and at the same time, I can't even feel half my body. 
I don't know that I made the right decision, but I do want to thank you for giving a... Well, and that's it. Thank you so much for sharing this story with us. I know it can't have been easy. Thank you for having me here. The role of the newsreader was played by an heiress Quinones. The role of Valerie Hawkins was played by Leslie Gideon. The role of Kevin Fields was played by AJ Beckles. The role of the narrator was played by Elliot Gindy. <laughs>